Today on V8 Extra, we look back at all the fun in the sun to review the Sukrajen Townsville 400. In race 14, Garth Tander's milestone win turned the fortunes of the Toll Holden Racing Team. And one day later, Jamie Wincup struck back for Team Vodafone. We'll discuss all the ups and downs. Aaron Noonan's found his way to Kelly Racing to chat with David Reynolds after his impressive display. And Mark Larkham explains one of the most important aspects of the sport. That's all today on V8 Extra. Hi everybody, welcome once again to V8 Extra. Great to have your company today. Last weekend, races 14 and 15 of the V8 Supercars Championship for 2011, the Sucrogen Townsville 400. We're going to review all of that today, as you just heard. It was a great weekend in the sunshine. We've officially passed the halfway mark of this championship, having gone through race 14. We've got 28 in total this year, and then we backed up with 15 on Sunday. It was a huge rock and race weekend. As always, to help me through this today, Mark Larkham joins me. Hey, mate. Thank you, buddy. Nice to have you here, Larko. It was a huge event. Lots of stuff going on. Thirsty, Merck, Sneaky Sound System, Garth Tander, Jamie Wincup, they're all there. I can't believe you and I walked past Thirsty I Merck. Know. I'll never do that again. <laughs> Big ticket items for me, mate. There were sort of four of them. Um, Garth Tander, which we'll talk more about. Jamie Wincup, I thought, after being, you know, double stacking in the pit lane there, I thought he was over and out. Come back, great. Um... Jimmy Slade, um, Davey Reynolds, a couple of young blokes that keep emerging. I think we should just continue to take note. On the downside, Shane Van Gisbergen's qualifying. They've got to do something there. James Courtney, they need to do something there. Uh, and the rules. We need to talk about some of the rules issues. There are a couple of little grey areas that bobbed up on the weekend, so that's something that we'll look at in more detail. On that subject, let's, uh, let's take a look at the points table in more detail. There it is up on screen at the moment. 186 points between Wincup and Lowndes. The thing for me, Larko, that's really interesting is just how tight it is, though, and we made this comment last weekend in the telecast. When you look at Rick Kelly there in fourth and you look back as far as probably Garth Tander in seventh, there's absolutely nothing between these guys. It sets up a great second half of the championship. Something we should drag from that is we've debated and argued and changed championship points for lo you know, on a lot of occasions in the championship's history. You'd have to say we've got it about right. It's working pretty well at the moment. Yeah. Certainly a lot to talk about and uh, any man's guess as to who's going to come out on top. Now speaking of coming out on top, when we last got together we were talking to Garth Tander and talking about how tough things had been in Darwin. It was a heck of a turnaround for him in race 14 on Saturday last weekend. It was a beautiful drive and those guys look strong. I get a sense that he feels we're bashing him up sometimes, but the point we're trying to make is, and you know yourself, when you're running a race team or involved in a race team of that nature, it's extremely difficult to get everything in order. And there is some change, some personnel change at the top level going on inside that team. And how the hell they've managed to come out the other side of that, or even during it, and construct a win when the car was not good on Friday morning, was not even great on Friday afternoon, I think is an outstanding team effort. He does a very good job, though, doesn't I mean, Garth... Definitely races very, very strongly. 49th career win. He surpassed that record that was achieved by Peter Brock. And for the Toll Holden Racing Team, win number 199. So 200 is not terribly far away. It didn't work out quite so well on Sunday, but we'll talk about that later in the program. But it was an impressive performance. And, uh, and I didn't think that it was possible. I mean, I'll put my hand up right now. I didn't think he was going to win that race. I don't think a lot of drivers would have done it, Neil. And in that particular circumstance, you need a Marcus Ambrose, a Mark Scaife or a Garth Tander who have the ability to, to rally troops around them and get what they want from the car in difficult circumstances. Alright, let's move on then to the controversial aspect of the race win because uh, and this doesn't happen terribly often but we had opposing views on this and so did Mark Scaife but there it is up on screen at the moment Tander arriving in the pit lane and clobbering and here it is from the rear, clobbering what we describe as the floppy, the little yellow nylon thing there, and on top of the line. Now, I'd had some previous experience with this because I'd discussed it with race officials before, which is why I made the call that I thought it was OK. A lot of people, in fact, queried it. In fact, we've got one here at the moment. Uh, you can see up on screen the question there being asked, a passionate letter sent to us, I might mention, how come he wasn't penalised? Now, by comparison to uh, the Mark Winterbottom scenario at Abu Dhabi, Mark came from the other side of the road very late call crossed over the line and I knew from a previous conversation that that probably wasn't going to be the way it was interpreted from race control. What did you think? Well I had a good chat to Adam Perry, my dear friend, who's also the general manager of motorsport for V8 Supercars. Well, he used to run your race team. Well, well he did, no, but, but it's good because we can have the frank discussion. He's very passionate about it. I mean obviously the first thing you look at is, is safety. Was anything compromised in that regard? But 
where our game is difficult, say, compared to football and other things, is that there's there's rules that have to be rolled out relevant to circuits. And so the, we've had rules in the past where we've said you can't go over a floppy, but that might have been 18 races ago, and we all have that stuck in our mind. So when we see that happen, we think, bang, it's wrong. But I can't find a rule anywhere that says you can't run over a floppy at the moment. So it's very, very hard for competitors and commentary team to stay on top of the rule book. It was one of the rare occasions that we all had a little <laughs> kerfuffle afterwards on this one. Now, it was a huge weekend also for the boys down at Kelly Racing. Aaron Noonan's with us today. He's down in Melbourne at Kelly Racing. And for Davey Reynolds, it was all thumbs up, Aaron. Oh, he was good, wasn't he, Neil? He was in really great form. Career best qualifying, really stepped it up. Obviously didn't get a trophy, didn't get a result to speak of, but a lot of people talking about David Reynolds from the weekend, and we'll catch up with him here at Kelly Racing very soon on V8 Extra. All right, we'll take a break on Extra. When we come back, we're going to review all the racing action from races 14 and 15. Stay with us. to Garth Tander and the Toll Holden Racing Team. Winners for race number 14 of the championship last weekend in Townsville, Larco. It was a ripper of a race. But we were talking a lot about a young bloke who's apparently in a hurry at the moment. We're talking about him more and more all the time. He's with Aaron Noonan down at Kelly Racing and he did an outstanding job, mate. Yeah, he did, Neil. He was really great, wasn't he? He didn't quite get a result in the end, but a personal best qualifying performance and led the race on Saturday. And I have to say, he looked really good out in front in that straight co car. And lo and behold, he's with us right now, Davey Reynolds. I, I need to say, though, we need to put a disclaimer on this because you know it as being a bit of a cool cat of the V8 paddock, but gee, great weekend. You must take so much confidence from that. Yeah, we do. Thanks, Aaron. Um, you know, it was really good qualifying speed. You know, first race, we had a good strategy. We have to do something a bit different. Uh, myself and James because we're not really in the championship hunt so we're just going to go try and win races and get on the podium as much as we can and try and get as far up the grid as we can. And I think we would have achieved that on Saturday but knowing me things don't really go as to plan and you know, I suffered out there. Tell me about on Saturday, it looked like on our telecast you shooed Cam McConville away when he wanted to talk to you but that wasn't the case was it? Just give us the background there. Yeah well b before Cam got there I was having a chat to um, James Courtney about you know, I tried to get into pit lane and he tried to pass me and, you know, when they when they told me on the radio, you can come to pit lane now and get out, I was more than happy to. So I wanted to get there as quick as I can. And, um, yeah, I was saying, like, yeah, he's not happy, so you actually didn't see that bit, I don't think. <laughs> Tell us, too, about you set out last year in terms of the championship. We only drove the Enduros after being full-time in 09. Do you appreciate the opportunity more? Do you understand it more than you did in 09? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in 09, you know, I was, I was just thrown into the seat, you know, it, it all, my deal happened quite late and I wasn't really expecting it. And, the, the, you know, the competition, the level of competition, the cars are so different, you know, there's so much stuff you can, you got to learn to actually go, to go faster. And I think I'm slowly achieving that now, so I, I appreciate the opportunity that Kelly Racing has given me and, and Stratco as well. So we're, we're sort of going great guns at the moment. Some people say that you're a bit too much of a relaxed cat. You are a little bit different to the normal V8 supercar driver, but has that hurt you in the past or has that been a... I mean, from a media point of view, it's a, it's a great thing. The honest truth, <laughs> every year I've raced, I've had um, discussions about, you know, my... not not so much maturity or... <laughs> or um, yeah, I better be careful here. So, you know, I'll, I haven't had one here yet, so I'm pretty happy. You know, they must be pretty impressed with me. I've, I've tried to be a bit different and, you know, show a lot more interest than I usually would, which actually has helped a lot so you know it's it's you know it's a wonderful place to work all the boys are fantastic you know myself and my engineer we've got a really good friendship going and we understand each other and that engineer you talk of is James Small so just quickly it's a unique relationship you're former teammates and he's an ex-driver so that's got to be a big help yeah former teammates in Formula Ford with Sonic Racing um 
he was fifth in the championship and I sort of won the championship. But James was really, he was a lot quicker than me, but he kept crashing. <laughs> and sort of, that's what's happened this year. I've been pretty fast, but stuff keeps finding me. I don't really crash into people. I think people crash into me mainly. I think that's what every race driver says. Great, great job last weekend, Dave Reynolds from Strat K Racing. We'll keep an eye on him at Queensland Raceway. He might just be the next guy who's on that list of potential podium finishers. Appreciate that, Aaron, and thanks also to David. He's only just turned 26, Larko. It's a nice performance, you know. And look, you look at the numbers, and to qualify eighth and third, respectively, across both days, and then you look at the corresponding race result, it's not there. But you can always work when you've got the base speed. You can fix the other stuff later. You're dead right, mate. That's the hard bit. But he's a, he's a good kid, isn't he? And I just reckon at this stage of his career, I don't know who's around him, but if you, if you get some good mentoring to teach him about, you know, adversity and how tough it's going to be and how to get the most from his team and car, I think the future's bright for him. What he does have to do is stop talking his stocks down because he says, oh, you know, that's me, that's the bad luck that I attract. Well, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy if you keep saying it keeps on happening. So, Davey, stop doing that. But we, uh, we're we very impressed by the speed and I reckon he's yep. doing a, a ripper job. And you've got to remember, of course, that he didn't do the main game last year, you know. So to have the year away, he's probably gone back... At, you know, step, got a bit hungry and come back and fight. It's a good effort. Oh, there's no doubt if you just look five years down the track, you know that guys like uh, Timmy Slade, Davey Reynolds, they're going to be well and truly on our lips. All right, race 15 highlights coming up on V8 Extra. We'll take a break. Fire email to us if you can. There's the details on screen. Join us again in just a tick. <laughs> So James started in position number 12. He's now up to fifth. Oh, sneaky little move. That's close. Here he goes down the inside and good job. And there he is down the inside. A little bit of debris on the circuit. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Drama with the right hand rear. Very late dive from Courtney. The wind Cup will get his sixth race win of 2011. Race 15 last weekend, it was a wild ride in the Rock and Race weekend, the Superage in Townsville 400. My take on it, Larko, was this. I thought that Team Vodafone did an outstanding job with their strategy going soft tyres. Remember, it was an option weekend. You had to use both. Soft, hard, soft for them. Many others went hard, soft, soft. Clearly, track position gave them the edge that they were looking for. Where was the safety car all weekend? It was. I mean, I would have put the house on the fact that we're going to see it on both days. A bit of debris on Sunday was the first time that we saw the Peters safety car. FPR have clearly tidied up their car a little on the soft tyre. And a nice job, Alex Davison, quiet achiever, grabbed a fourth on Sunday. Well, Triple Eight did run a bit of a risk of the safety car there, but uh, in fact, I'm all for the camera guys going out with a lunch pack and a debris pack, <laughs> so they can drop something over the uh, edge of the track because it really does. Now. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does transform the way it rolls out. Hey, another little um, item that emerged over the weekend. Will Davidson in race 14. Now, he had Craig Lowndes behind him, you might recall, on those last couple of laps. Now, Will's probably not the most aggressive guy in pit lane, but that, for me, was a little turning point. I mean, you've had Craig behind you, I've had him behind you. He's a mongrel. <laughs> he, there's no one harder to keep behind, and I thought Will, in the way he aggressively did that, well done. Yeah, Big tip. Alright, change gear now, and let's focus on one of the most important aspects of V8 supercar racing, the start with Mark Larkham. Now, you might recall recently at Darwin just how close qualifying was. In fact, right here at Townsville last year, similar circumstance. We're talking distances of this much, and they measure that because they've got these, if you look here at the start-finish line, these timing lines embedded in the road, electronic, that talk to the cars. But what that does, that closeness, it puts a massive emphasis on starting the car. I mean, that's where you've got to try and grab that small advantage because the performance of the cars is so, so close. So let's just have a look at that from outside the car because you might recall at Sandown last year during the telecast, I showed you from inside the car some of the things you have to pay attention to when starting it. You know, things like throttle position, how you use your little handbrake, the revs you use, the information on your dash and how all that's used. But now from outside the car, some of the things you have to take notice of. Now, the first and most important one, here's your grid box, seems pretty obvious, but you have to start the car from somewhere within that box. Now, Mark Winterbottom, you might recall, last year was penalised very heavily, stop go penalty, for pulling his car up just outside the box at the start of the race. A heavy, heavy price to pay. Now, the rules state that you can't 
take your front tyre across this line. So what that means, the front air dam or the front bumper can extend out here, but the tyre itself can be on the line and it can't go past it. Now the other thing, as you come up to the start line from way back down here, what you'll generally do is a burnout before you do your warm-up lap to put some nice rubber down. You'll come up to the line, engage your clutch, bring your revs up, and that's where you see sometimes the clutch gets hot and the car starts to roll. Now again, sometimes guys will start back a little bit from the start line to allow for a little bit of that roll. It's okay if the car rolls, but it must be stopped stationary at the point that the lights go out. Talking about lights, let's jump up on the rest rostrum here and have a look at the lighting sequence. One more metre. OK, perfect, mate. Now I'm elevated standing in the starter's rostrum here at Townsville. Now, as the starter, the first thing I'll be looking for is that waved green flag across the back of the grid. That means the grid is set, done, in position. At which point, I'll then give the field five seconds. Now, what that means is five seconds before I actually hit this button, which is the red light. That brings the red light on. Now what will happen after that point, arbitrarily somewhere between three and five seconds, the light will go off, which will mean the race has commenced. Now, if you get that right, you'll generally do zero to 100 kilometres an hour in about 3.8 seconds if it does a, if you do a good start. Now that's not always the case. You know, typically race weekends, couple of races, couple of starts, guys get it wrong. Let's have a look at a couple of them. Now let's have a look at Jamie Wink up here. You can see him on the right hand side there. Now this is race 14 at Townsville. And just watch, we're talking, look at that, just a microsecond. We talk about those millimetres and that is the difference. And Jamie as a result of that has lost positions. Now we've had Aaron Noonan actually go off and analyse Jamie's starts this year. Sorry Jamie. But in fact race 15 on Sunday was the first time that Jamie has gained a position off the start. Now. I mean, luckily he's an outstanding competitor because his starts haven't been great. In fact, over the year he's lost 19 positions off the start. In fact, I'd be giving him a pat on the back because he's made the competition great as a result of it. Well, when you, can, <laughs> when you consider how many points he's accumulated and where he's sitting in the championship, it's a great recovery. But it's an interesting point to make and it is so important to get those first five or ten seconds right because everything else you do over the course of the race and often the weekend is dictated by those very tiny seconds. Well, as you know, it changes your mi mindset from the outset. You know, you either attack or defend. All right, we're going to take a break on V8 Extra. When we come back, we've got a fascinating comparison between Lee Holtzworth and Mark Winterbottom. Stay with us. looking at that stuff, I could compare cars and drivers all day long. You got hooked on that too then, How Larko. How good is that? Well, difference in their turn-in rates, a lot more wheel work from Lee you Holdsworth see who's there. Got what revs on yeah, board when yeah. they're plucking gears. I want to see more of that. That's yeah, great. Well, well we, done. We'll get it organised. Now, one thing that emerged on the weekend that was really interesting, a tiny little anomaly in the way in which the supplementary regulations were written for this race meeting yeah. meant that people could use their soft tyres on two occasions in race 15. And Larko, you've pulled out the rules and you've got more to say well, on this. Well, well, here are the sup regs. There are a set of rules that go out just before the race meeting relevant to the race meeting and the guys do a good job writing them out and as we know you had eight soft tyres you could use there on the weekend and it says you could use four of those new on Saturday, fair enough, and four of those new on Sunday and that's the mistake. Where they wrote the word new for Sunday's race, everyone Jerry thought, well, let's drag the eight, sorry, the four used soft tyres from Saturday into Sunday. So that's through everything into the bus. But where this falls over for me is there's a rule, a much grander rule, that doesn't allow any change to that unless the whole pit lane signs off it. Now, if you're going to benefit from that, you're not going to sign off on changing it on Sunday morning. That, to me, is the thing that needs fixing. Having said that, I wonder whether or not 
what happened by accident is actually a good thing because it did put some intrigue in the race. What are your thoughts on that? Mate, we've been talking about this for a while. I reckon in the ideal world, if you could roll out the format, just a very very variation of format, sorry, on a, just you know, a couple of hours before a race, outstanding. Throw it all into the air. We could sit here and talk for hours on this. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time. Our next V8 supercar event, well, it's a long way down the road. It's the Coates Hire Ipswich 300, and that's coming up August 19 through 21. Our next V8 Extra, well, next week we start a whole sequence of shows where we're on the road. We're making a stop at Team Vodafone in Brisbane. Looking forward to that one. And that show goes to air next weekend. That's July 23 at midday. And coming up on 7, we've also got round 3 of the Fujitsu V8s. Looking forward to that. Thanks very much for your help today, Larko. Thanks, mate. And thank you for watching. Look forward to your company next week. Bye for now.